A very warm welcome to the Art Vlog Art Lovers. This is the vlog which takes you to galleries and exhibition spaces across London, the southeast of England and beyond. And today I'm very excited to be taking you inside a show at Whitechapel Art Gallery um, by the French Algerian artist Zineb Sadira, although she's lived in London since the 1980s, so we kind of claim her as our own. Um, Sadira has, is a really interesting artist who produced uh, work in many mediums, and I'm led to believe this is like an installation piece um, that was first shown at the Venice Biennale in 2022 where it got rave reviews. I've led also to believe it's deeply personal and it was in my top 10 most anticipated picks for art shows in London in 2024. Um, I've left it a little bit of time to come so I could give myself a really full opportunity to explore this show. So come and join me as we head inside Dreams Have No Titles by Zaneb Sudira here at the Whitechapel Art Gallery in East London. Like many of the finest installations, you step off the street in Whitechapel and are transported into a different world. Your eyes take time to readjust to the bar which you're presented with and which you enter and become a part of. Loud tango music playing in the background. As you sort of look around and take in some of the details like those two glasses of wine you can see on the left and a bottle and the mirror which remind you of Manet's bar at the Folie Bergère as you stare into it. Um, it becomes clear that you're also in some kind of film set because the space is illuminated by bright lights. And this realisation leads you to straight away question what your role is within this, within this space. Are you an actor? Are you the director? Are you an extra? Are you a member of the crew? Um, and as the music plays on, I had to resist the urge to dance and tango myself across the space. It's only later on that you learn that this is actually the key set from Ettore Scalala's 1983 film La Balle, um, which uh, recounts France's wars and political struggles across the ages through events in the same bar um, between the years of 1936 and 1983. And this was symbolically a co-production between three countries, Italy, Algeria and France. And it's a really important piece of radical cinema. As the music plays, um, you're encouraged or drawn forward to behind the set where you're transported into a backstage area where you can explore the clothes worn in a dressing room um, by the actors. And a bit further round, you're, you're, you're brought to a doll's house of a recreation of a scene which becomes really symbolic um, upstairs in the upper galleries. Um, and you're also drawn to your attention to, to an area where, a, where a, it is all set up for a band to play. And it's very tempting just to get up and grab a microphone and begin, begin, um, begin um, performing. The, um, the whole set is incredibly atmospheric, as hopefully you felt, and it leads us to these questions about where are we and what are we doing here? Upstairs we're transported into a different set, and this is actually a home scene from um, the film The Battle of Algiers. The Battle of Algiers was one of the first films, really, to deal with um, French imperialism. And it was banned in France, so um, Sadira never got to see it during her childhood when she went to the cinema a lot. And she actually first saw it in London, I think it was in the early 1990s. And she talks about it as being incredibly important um, in terms of her understanding her own past, as well as that of um, her parents. We're then confronted with a coffin and a scene from um, the, the Visconti's L'Etranger, a film version of, of Camus' The Outsider, which is a seminal piece of French culture in terms of um, ad addressing French colonial impact on the Arab world in North Africa. And it shows, obviously, the, the stifling tale of a French settler murdering an Arab uh, man in, in colonial Algeria. And um, these sets, which are all so different in feel, um, are united by the fact that they all confront France's 
very difficult and brutal um, colonial relationship with North Africa and the consequences, an issue which is clearly very, very close to the artist's heart. From the cold and unwelcoming set of L'Etranger, we're transported to a much warmer environment of um, Zneb Sadira's own Brixton living room. And the colours um, here and the posters um, uh, take you right into the heart of our world, as does the retro 1960s furniture. And your eyes are drawn in different directions and you feel kind of almost as if you're snooping into a very intimate and personal space. Um, which is which which sort of is very very different feel to the film sets which have preceded it but then you see a light and you begin to think well is this a film set what is our role in this you're invited to sit down on one of Sadira's couches where you can put headphones on and listen to a conversation between the curator of the exhibition and Sonia Boyce we're reminded that um, Sadira and Boyce live very close to each other in Brixton. They both showed at the 2022 Venice Biennale. And we're left imagining some of the artistic conversations that occurred between the two artistic giants in this very living room. It's only when you head down a red carpet and into a cinema with, with wooden fold-up seats that the whole show is pulled together and makes sense. Because the film that you see, in which the dearest stars a prominent role, combines autobiography, radical um, post-colonial and anti-colonial politics, you see the reading from Franz Fanon, as well as um, the uh, love affair of cinema, which permeates the whole show. Then you see little extracts from some of the sets that you've been in already, both from the films and from the recreations that Sadira produced. Um, to create this really unreal sense of questioning what you've just experienced. And it's a fantastic installation. At the heart of it, and what gives it its emotion, is Sadira's own experience of going to these very basic Parisian cinemas in her childhood with her father, um, and this providing a kind of linchpin to her early life. I do really recommend it and advise that you come along if you want to be taken out of the, your, your own world then into um, into a, a, a place that will make you think. It was a complex, nuanced, multi-layered um, multi uh, piece of installation art and I really enjoyed it. I thought that £12.50 or £13.75 of a donation is good value and the show is on until the 12th of May. So do get along there if you have not been to see it already. I really enjoyed this and it didn't disappoint in my top 10 of the year.